Hello everybody, welcome to the Comic Game Movie Show. My name is Deshaun and happy 4th of July. Another year, another 4th of July, another birthday of America, another celebration. Usually on 4th of July, as you guys know, I do like to do a little uh, movie review and pick out a movie that's very patriotic. To this year, I feel like with the Captain America Brave New World trailer about to come out pretty soon, I figured we should go to the Wayback Machine. Way back in Phase 1 of the MCU and review Captain America The First Avenger. This movie is, quite frankly, for a long time, and it may still be, depending on how I th go back and think about it, the most underrated movie in the MCU. Now, I'm not sure if it is or not. There are some other movies in the MCU that I think are very underrated. I think Eternals is underrated. Like, as many problems, I think Eternals is underrated. I think the Doctor Strange 2 is underrated. Um, I think that Ant-Man is very underrated. I think that the, um, there, there's a lot of underrated movies. Like, there's movies in the MCU that I do feel that are underrated. But Captain America the First Avenger is the one that I remember being like, I remember watching this movie and enjoying this movie. Like, I saw this movie with my grandmother, so people would know. And to tell you how good this movie was, this movie was so good that me going into this movie, I know Captain America. I know the Captain America mythos. I was never the biggest Captain America guy, though. Really, I really wasn't. When I see saw the Avengers teams and stuff, Captain America, I never got him. You know what I mean? He always he felt like just a, a like like Cyclops. I felt the same way that most people feel about Cyclops, which is he's this Boy Scout, he's Captain America, he has his shield, whatever. And I didn't, I never really got Captain America. I mean, he didn't get a show or anything. Like Captain America didn't get Iron Man got a show, Hulk got a show. You know, Captain America didn't have anything. So, very similar to Thor, I didn't really have any feelings positive or negative about Captain America. And then this movie came out in 2011. I remember it like it was yesterday. I went to go see this movie with my mom. And I was saying, this movie was so good that my mother cried at the end of the movie. Now, I knew what was going on. I knew he wasn't dying. I knew he would be back. But my mom didn't know that. So, it was very interesting seeing my mother's reaction and seeing her. Well, I wouldn't say overreaction, but seeing she had a very strong reaction to the end of that movie, to the end of the to, to the end of that movie, as we all know, with him dying but not dying. But anyways, Captain America, it tells the original or it tells the origin. I mean, Captain America: First Avenger tells the origin story of Steve Rogers, the first superhero, or at least the first publicly recognized superhero in the Marvel world. Um, Steve Rogers was this kid from, Qu kid, not Brooklyn. Was he from Brooklyn? Queens. No, nah, from, um, Brooklyn. This kid from Brooklyn, this scrawny kid. At the time, it was groundbreaking technology that they used to put Chris Evans, former Johnny Storm, by the way, Chris Evans' head on this tiny body to make Steve Rogers look like this frail, this frail, very sickly man. And at the time, too, like, when Chris Evans first got announced for this, like, most of us were like, you mean the Johnny Storm? It was very odd. It was very weird. And a lot of the roles, Chris, because Chris Evans had been in some comic book stuff. He had been in like, I think he was in Scott Pilgrim before this and stuff like that. And obviously he was in The Losers. Um, he had been in things, but like, he was always like wise cracky and like charming and whatnot. So like, seeing this guy who's kind of always playing this charming, wise cracking kind of a character, seeing him be stoic, this earnest and just honest man this of integrity and just pure heart and good goodwill and just do the right thing seeing him become play that was very jarring at the time people remember him from not that not your or not your own what was it not your ordinary teenage movie or not your whatever when he was the jock in that movie he usually plays that kind of a character so seeing him play this kind of a character it really cha it changed people's perspective on him this role would change chris evans entire career it changed how people view him it changed how us as viewers viewed chris evans you know because even um because robert Downey jr gets a lot of praise but robert Downey jr was a powerhouse actor before iron man people forget this man got nominated for an oscar for chaplin like 10 years before iron man was even a thing 10 years for you know iron the iron man movie was ever even on the table so you know robert Downey jr was always a powerhouse talent chris evans was kind of boxed into a this is what he is, you know, because like I said, all the roles he played up to that point were all bubbly, and he's just this jokester, he's just the jock, the handsome, charming jock, and then he plays this character, and it completely changed people's perspectives on him. 
But yeah, so Chris Evans being in this, Tommy Lee Jones brought a fun presence to it. He was a fun character. Um, and obviously, my wife, Haley Atwell, has Agent Peggy Carter. Ah, love at first sight. What a woman, man. What a woman, that Peggy. I still want Agent Carter to come back. I still think they could still do that show, but I digress. Peggy Carter, great dynamic between these love interests. One of the, it's probably still, in my opinion, the best love interest in comic books in terms of the way it was, like, it was done in one movie anyways because their love persevered, man. Their love was like, especially when it came back around in Winter Soldier, like, but the Peggy Carter love, because it was real, right? Because she fell in love with him when he was a skinny, nothing man because of who he was as a human being before he became all buff and jacked and shit. Plus, there's a whole funny behind-the-scenes story about when he's in the pod and he comes out of the pod and he's all chiseled and that um, Haley Atwell, the actor who plays Peggy Carter, she hadn't seen Chris Evans with his shirt off before. So here he is in front of her, just shredded, and she's just like, whew, like, yeah, man, eating that chicken. But anyways, the movie was class. It was class because it was about his origin. It was a classic origin story. And a lot of people said Marvel were actually debating making it happen, like if they would be able to get away with making this in World War II. Obviously, you know, it's Disney and whatnot. Well, actually, at the time when this movie came out, it was co It was, um, was it co-produced? It was co-produced by Paramount. So you would probably notice if you go back and watch it, there's some bloody sequences in this movie that, you know, because <laughs> it was co-produced by Paramount at the time. But either way, this movie is, it's, it's classic. It, like, seeing Chris Evans, the dynamic between him and Peggy and Bucky, they obviously changed Bucky's origin. Bucky in the comics was a little boy who was just trained and was, you know, Captain America's little sidekick. But obviously, Marvel didn't feel like that would make, like, that was a little weird. Like, why would anyone let a boy fight in the middle of World War, you know, of a war? You know, at least, at least with um, Batman, it's like, okay, it's crime fighting, maybe, but this is a war. So they up Bucky and just made him his childhood friend. And the dynamics still work. He's their childhood friends. And the dynamic between Bucky having to look out for him for so long, and then once Steve becomes Captain America, it's like the roles reverse. That was also interest, that, that was also an interesting dynamic. Um, we already knew where it was going with Bucky, but when Bucky dies, like, like that's the thing. So many things in this movie hit harder when you don't know that there are other movies. And at the time, when this movie was coming out, there was only rumors about the Avengers movies. So Bucky's death and Steve crashing, it all hit way more in the theater when you're watching it than later on in life. Now granted, I would say the whole montage through the um, Howling Commandos was a bit sad. I wish I could have got to see more of the Howling Commandos. The action sequences aren't the best in the in the MCU. They've definitely top. They've definitely topped everything that's happened in this movie in terms of effects, in terms of visuals, in terms of the action. They've topped the stuff. But the earnestness of Chris Evans' performance, the performances from Haley Atwell and Tommy Lee Jones, Hugo Weaving doing a serviceable job as the Red Skull. His Red Skull, he didn't light the world on fire. It was a little muhaha, but. He, he, but he, he kind of, he leaned into it so much, and he really did bring the comic book version of the Red Skull to life, and for the most part, the comic book version of the Red Skull is, is kind of muha ha Like, I love the, because one of the things I always love about the Red Skull is, I love the idea, just because they kind of make it clear in the MCU, they always make it kind of weird in the comics, like, Hydra are just Nazis, but they actually kind of make it clear that Hydra aren't Nazis, technically. Hydra have existed before the Nazis ever existed, so... Hydra is just working with Nazis to further their own agendas. This is how you kind of figure it out. But the idea, the Red Skull is so bad. In the comics, this is accurate. The Red Skull is so heinous, so bad. By the way, in the comics, he was personally trained by Adolf Hitler, by the way. But he was so crazy, so radical, so intense, so extreme, that Hitler himself was scared of him that Hitler actually sent people to kill him. And he, Red Skull was so hardcore, he was going to take out Germany too. Like, you know, I, I love this idea. He's, he was just, he's that bad. He's that hardcore. And that's kind of how they always played the Red Skull. It's like, he is the devil. Like, he's the devil. He's hardcore. And they played it like that here as well. I do wish we would have got a more uh, another version of the Red Skull, a more nuanced version of the Red Skull. Because this version was just supposed to be kind of like the opposite of Steve Rogers. Whereas Steve, Ro whereas Steve Rogers took the formula and it brings out whatever you are inside. It just brings that to the surface. It made him the man he could be. 
and it made the Red Skull basically the the, man, the evil man that he actually is. So that dichotomy was obviously nice. Their fight sequence near the end, though, was just, was a bit, like, it is a bit more, um, on the Indiana Jones side of things. Now you see who made it. The same guy who made Rocketeer film this. So you, so you can, and if you ever watched the Rocketeer, you can kind of see it too when you watch this movie. Like in terms of the action sequences, in terms of the visuals of it. But they really did bring that time period to life. It's one of the only time period movies in the MCU. I dug the hell out of this movie, man. And to me, it's still one of the most underrated movies in the MCU. If you've never seen First Avengers, or it's been a while since you've seen First Avengers, do yourself a favor. Go back and watch it. It is a treat. It, it flies by. It's cool seeing the beginning stages of Captain America. Plus, like, this this movie will really build the entire Captain America character for the rest of the MCU. Like, because he goes from being in this world where it's pretty black and white who the bad guy is to a world where it's anything but. But anyways... Thank you guys for the Comic Game Movie Show. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Check out Captain America the First Avenger. I would have gave that movie an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you guys again. See you on the next one. Goodbye.